Hi, I'm at the Kyrka National Park in Croatia and it's a really beautiful region with a lot of waterfalls and small lakes and originally I was just going here for holidays, didn't plan to take any pictures but of course I had to bring at least one lens with me and my camera and I, I was actually surprised how well it worked to take some of the pictures even though it's not so easy, I mean there are certain opening hours so you cannot go super early in the morning or very late in the evening then of course you need to stick to the path, which completely makes sense, but makes it a bit more uh, tricky with the composition. And finally, there are a lot of tourists, especially in summer. So it's not easy to just put a tripod somewhere. And actually for today, I didn't take a tripod or a lot of equipment, just as I said, camera, one lens and some small accessories. And I just want to talk about today, how you can basically take some nice pictures and combine it with a nice day with your friends, family, whatever, so that the photography is not taking up too much time and you still get nice pictures. So let's start with the planning. Even though sunrise and sunset is often not possible due to the opening times of the park, I would still try to use the morning and evening hours as much as possible just because the light is a bit softer you don't have so harsh shadows and the colors look a bit nicer and here the date of the year of course also plays an important role because in June the days are just the longest so if the park opens let's say at 7 30 uh, in June this is maybe already three hours or two hours after sunset sunrise whereas in August or in September this might just be one hour after sun sunrise. I don't know the exact times, but I think you get what I mean. And then I would try to study a bit the map and study the different locations. So of course you can go with backlit. Um, you will not have this golden light, as I mentioned, also because the sun, I mean, there are some hills, so the sun is blocked in the really, when it's really in a low angle. But what you could try to do is incorporate the sun star. Uh, unfortunately, this didn't work well for me this morning. I will just show another picture of what's the idea here. Um, and otherwise I would rather have try to have the uh, sun in my back. It's just giving a more nicer look. And if you have the morning light in your back, it's also nicer if there are no clouds in the sky or almost none, because then the reflection of the water or the colors of the water will just look much nicer. Um, whereas during the day it can be nice if some clouds move in. I had this today and I was surprised how nice the images still looked. I was expecting a really a harsher light, but due to this like play of shadows and light, it turned out really well. Another thing that helps with getting better colors is of course the polarizer filter. Um, it just minimizes a bit the reflection in the water and gives more depth, more color in the water and sometimes also in the leaves of the tree. So I would definitely get a polarizer if you go to shoot here. Just uh, pay attention, you of course always need to turn the polarizer that it fits your scene. So if you move the camera from the vertical to horizontal and the other way around, think about adjusting this as well and I personally like if the water is like blowing so having a longer shutter speed if you also want to go for this kind of shooting style then you will probably also need an ND filter um, my ND filter is like uh, taking three stops of light, of light away which just allows me to yeah darken the whole image a bit so that I can set in a longer shutter speed and since, and since the water of the waterfalls is still uh, flowing quite fast, I don't need a shutter speed of like four or five seconds. Uh, this morning I was shooting with something between one tenth and one fifth of a second and this turned out quite nicely. As I said, it's not really practical to put a tripod because there's so many people moving and even if you don't block the way completely, the problem is that if it's on a wooden path, the vibrations of the foot will make the image shaky anyway. So I didn't even bother to bring one. I just took my um, took the camera freehand. I, of course, uh, activated the image stabilizer on my lens. Like the, I had the 16 to 35, um, and the IBIS of the camera is also active. Even though with an RF lens, of course, these two would work even better in conjunction. But even now, I had the feeling with something like 24 millimeters and one eighth of a second in average. I had, and I took like six images, one or two were completely sharp. So this is my next tip, take several images. Um, you can delete the blurry ones after in no time, but it's a bit annoying if you come home and you see that your the perfect shot is blurry and with these shutter speeds this can really happen. So another thing 
that helps here is just putting the camera really to your face that you have like a bit more stabilization and not like a awkward position in front of you. I would put the electronic first curtain maybe if you have a high dynamic range like if you're taking pictures of the sun star and backlit. If the dynamic range is not an issue uh, or you want to be just more safe that the images are not blurry then put it in electronic mode directly. You lose a bit of dynamic range but you have no vibration caused by the shutter. And of course always check the images that you took, zoom in one to one, this can really save your day. So what type of lenses would I take here? Uh, first of all a wide angle, um, if you don't have one a standard zoom like a 24 to 70 or 24 to 105 should work just fine. Um, and then I would also take a light telephoto lens like a 70 to 200 or a 100 to 400 just for the waterfalls that are a bit more distant or if you just want to take a small scene of a waterfall more a crop um, this can be really nice and I missed that I didn't have one with me today so this was a bit of pity and it can also help if it, the weather is more overcast like it's getting now the sky look, just looks white and the wide angle shots don't look so appealing anymore in my opinion but then if you have a small waterfall and you crop in with a 100 to 400 or something you can still get nice details even though I need to say for these shots maybe a tripod can help because at 200 millimeters it will be really hard to hold one fourth of a second. The aperture really depends on your situation how much depth you have in the field and also since the shutter speed might be important for the waterfalls I was also adjusting the aperture a bit based on this so usually I was somewhere between f10 and f16 uh, in the real worst case f18 because I didn't have a stronger ND filter with me but this was in the ballpark of this and the ISO were usually at 100 I don't know if I pushed it once to 400 um, but that's a bit more or less what I said and I think that's basically all so I hope you enjoyed the video maybe you can go to this park or another park like the Plitvice lakes in Croatia or I can also highly recommend but I think you can apply this in any other location where you have the problem that there's a lot of visitors you have defined opening hours so you're a bit limited with the photography maybe you want to spend some time with family and friends and don't want that photography takes your whole day I think you can still take nice images and I hope this video helped you with this so see you in the next one bye